Compared to the widespread knowledge of Africans being taken as slaves, it is also recorded how Africans controlled the slave market. The trading of slaves is a familiar narrative, mainly because of Europeans going to Africa and taking the people off into slavery. This particular narrative is commonly taught in schools. The slavery to be explained here is called white slavery. Unlike the regular reports, it was of African slave traders who did not only raid British Isle and many other European countries, carrying white slaves to be sold in the slave markets of Africa. Although most modern historians minimize this history, it is still an event that can't be erased off the record. These events were recorded long before the Europeans ever became involved in slave trading. Slave trading is a lifelong tradition of Africans before the coming of the Europeans. Black empires enslaved neighboring nations and how various tribes made slaves out of other tribes. The around took black people for slaves, and sometimes the other way around. The Barbary Trade The Barbary was named after the Berbers who originally lived there and included countries like Algeria, Tunisia, and modern-day Morocco. The term Barbary is the derogatory meaning of Europe and the United States to the North African powers. The term derives from the term barbarians. It reflects the views of the Western powers themselves, which were usually slaves or slave societies at the time, towards Muslims and the Mediterranean. The Barbary slave trade refers to the white slave markets known on the Barbary coast of North Africa, now known as Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya between the 15th and 19th centuries. These markets boomed while the states were nominally under Ottoman suzerainty, but in a real sense, they were mostly autonomous. The North African slave market was known to have traded in European slaves. To get the slaves, Barbary pirates raided ships and towns in the coastal regions. Usually, the word pirate is faintly comical, and it reminds you of hands like Long John Silver, Captain Hook. You are also reminded of a skull and crossbones and hunting for treasures. The Barbary pirates were actually after people, specifically Christians, who could be sold as slaves in Muslim countries. Muslims set off to Europe to see if they can get as many white Christians as possible for the safety market in North Africa. No one was spared during these raids as both men, women, and children were captured, to such a degree that a lot of towns within the coastal regions were abandoned. The victims carried to captivity are loaded onto ships and taken to be sold as slaves in another continent and never seeing their homes again. Starting from a base on the Barbary coast in North Africa, Barbary pirates attacked ships crossing the Mediterranean and the north and west coasts of Africa, looting merchandise and enslaving captured people. Since at least 1,500, pirates have also attacked coastal cities such as Italy, Spain, France, Great Britain, the Netherlands, and places as far as Iceland and Ireland, capturing men, women, and children. Sometimes settlements like Baltimore in Ireland were abandoned after the raids and were not resettled until many years later. Between 1609 and 1616, the British family alone lost 466 merchant ships to Barbary pirates victims were either pirates traveling across the Mediterranean and along the western and eastern coast taken with their ships or primary cities near the coastline. With the supplies of slaves arriving through Trans-Sahara routes, the slave trade had been in North Africa since equity. The Ottoman and pre-Ottoman authorities at the time kept no essential records. Still, Observers in the late 1500s and early 1600s had estimations of about 35,000 European slaves held throughout the Barbary coast, across Tripoli and Tunis but especially in Algeria. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, the Barbary pirates, or more accurately, the Barbary pirates, operated out of four bases in North Africa, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli and multiple ports in Morocco. They used the words of John Bidolph's 1907 piracy story sometimes to intimidate maritime traders in the Mediterranean and the Atlantic by venturing into the English Channel to capture them. Barbary pirates are mainly Berbers, Arabs, and other Muslims, but some come from European Christians. Pirates use small, fast-moving ships to capture merchant ships and their cargo. They arrested the crew and passengers for ransom or sold them as slaves. Each of the four Barbary states has its ruler. Usually, he is a strong military man. 
he once seized the throne by assassinating rulers or murdering rival relatives. When the Barbary pirates snatched goods from the ships they captured, their primary purpose was to capture non-Muslims and sell them as slaves or ransom. Those who had relatives or friends who could rescue them were taken prisoner, the most famous of these was the writer Miguel de Cervantes, who was detained for nearly five years between 1575 and 1580 year. Muslim prisoners are usually released because it is forbidden to enslave Muslims. But this means they will never be able to return to their homeland. After the rebellion in the mid-17th century, the power of the Persians in the Ottoman Empire was second only to the decorative figures in the region, and people in Tripoli, Algiers, Tunisia and other areas became independent except for their names. Without a big central government to protect the law, the pirates themselves began to gain a lot of influence. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, Barbary attacks and kidnappings in Spain, France, Italy, Portugal, Britain, the Netherlands, Ireland, and Iceland. Pirate ships serve the chiefs or Muslim rulers of North Africa. They are subjects of the Ottoman Empire. As long as the empire gets its due contribution, it will encourage privatization. Privatization has two goals. Enslavement is usually a prisoner of Christians and freeing hostages in exchange for respect. In the early days, Barbary pirates played an essential role in shaping American foreign policy. Pirates triggered the first U.S. war in the Middle East, forced the U.S. to establish a navy, and set many precedents, including the hostage crisis involving the rescue of U.S. captives and the U.S. military intervention in the middle have been relatively frequent and bloody in the East. President Madison ordered a naval expedition to the coast of North Africa and defeated the Barbary powers, and ended 30 years of American tribute activities. The war between Barbary and the United States ended in 1815. It is estimated that about 1 million to 1.25 million white Christian Europeans were being held as slaves in North Africa from the beginning of the 16th century to the middle of the 18th century. This particular estimated figure was recorded to have been held by slave traders from Tunis, Algiers, and Tripoli. There was a decline in the markets after the Barbary Wars, where they lost and were conquered by France. This war ended in the 1830s. Other famous accounts of attacks on Barbary slaves include an attack mentioned in Samuel Pepys' diary and an attack on the coastal town of Baltimore in Ireland, during which the pirates left with the entire population of the settlement. This invasion of the Mediterranean is so frequent and destructive that the coast between Vernice and Malaya is so underpopulated that it is discouraged for anyone to settle there. It is said that this is mainly because no one else wants to be arrested. The power and influence of pirates were so great that countries, including the United States of America and other countries, paid tribute to pirates to prevent these attacks. The supply of the Black Sea seems to be more significant. The aggregation of local statistics and rough estimates shows that between 1468 and 1694, nearly 2 million Russians, Ukrainians and Poles were captured. In addition, in the 16th and 17th centuries, white slaves were acquired through a combination of attacks and trade. Customs statistics show that between 1450 and 1700, the total number of slaves imported from the Black Sea may be about 2.5 million. The island of Gozo was attacked on July 15, 51, and the entire population of 5,000 was reduced to slavery. This is a severe problem for Europe, especially for the Mediterranean countries, for the United Kingdom and even Iceland. Current estimates indicate that millions of Europeans were captured and taken to Africa. Barbaras, Barbara, Pirates are used to sailing by ship and then leaving the boat to drift in the British Ocean. For example, in the 17th century, the fishing industry was seriously threatened because they believed pirates were on board. They were afraid of being captured by slaves for a long time. Some coastal areas in Spain are deserted because people worry about living there. From Venice in the north to Malaga in the south, all the cities along the European coast are empty because those who live there always risk the slave owners landing in their villages and bringing them to Africa. Calma was especially dangerous at the end of the United Kingdom. Approximately 60 men, women, and children are deprived of each attack. 
the second admiral of Devon declared that the sea around the United Kingdom was thought like them. It was considered a Caribbean pirate island, but it was found that the Briston Canal on the island of London was held by a barbarian pirate and used as its base. In 1645, another person, women and children were kidnapped by Cornish coast and 240 men Burberry pirates. Tributes for her peace In 1662, Great Britain and the Barbary rulers reached the first treaty. This establishes a model similar to a treaty for other European countries that trade in the Mediterranean. Usually, the Barbary Peace Treaty requires a country to show respect to the pirate ruler, and then the pirate ruler will cancel the attack on the country's ships. The tribute usually consists of a large payment plus an annual payment. The yearly fee can be cash, military supplies, or expensive gifts from the ruler. A particular treaty may also include a ransom to free citizens of a country captured by the Barbary states. Barbary rulers often asked countries to renew their treaties to earn tremendous respect. Until a government agrees to the new terms, its ships remain fair game against pirates. The battle fleet of the European powers easily defeated the Barbary pirate ship. However, the Europeans accepted the tribute treaty. Countries like England believe that by paying tribute, they not only bought protection for themselves but also redirected pirates to cause severe damage to the merchant ships of competing nations. Before the War of Independence, the American colonies conducted extensive trade in the Mediterranean. During this period, the tribute treaty between Great Britain and the Barbary nations protected American ships. However, this protection disappeared after the colony separated from England. Many Britons believe the Barbary pirates will eliminate American trade competition in the Mediterranean. A British official said happily, Americans cannot protect themselves. They cannot pretend to have a navy. After discovering that American trade in the Mediterranean had almost ceased due to piracy, the Continental Congress agreed in 1784 to negotiate treaties with four Barbary countries. Congress appointed a special committee composed of John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin to oversee the negotiations. The following year, Congress authorized a maximum of $80,000 for tribute treaties with all Barbary states. In 1787, the United States and Morocco signed a tribute treaty. Facts have proved that sounded good to everyone and it was a one-time tribute of approximately $20,000 were paid to the United States. Except for some brief disagreements, Morocco never harassed American shipping. Algiers is the most powerful state in Barbary, but it is another matter. In 1785, Algiers pirates hijacked two American merchant ships and extorted all 21 people on board for ransom. The United States provided the captives with $4,200. The ruler of Algiers was called Day and asked for nearly $60,000. US the Americans refused, and the negotiations dragged on for more than ten years. The two commissioners who most participated in the tax treaty negotiation were John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Adams pays tribute to it because it is the cheapest way to regrow the American business in the Mediterranean. Jefferson disagreed. Believe that the need for respect is infinite. He hopes to solve the problem through war and proposes establishing a trading nation alliance to stop Barbary pirates. In 1790, Algiers pirates hijacked 11 American ships and more than 100 prisoners to supplement those extorted. This shocking news sparked a serious debate in the newly formed U.S. Congress on the necessity of establishing a navy. But it took five years for Congress to approve the construction of six warships. Finally, in 1796, the United States and Algiers signed a peace treaty. The United States agreed to pay $642,500, plus naval supplies and gifts provided to the Navy each year. In return, D promised to release American prisoners and protect American shipping. The United States had to borrow money to pay the main tribute. First Barbary War The First Barbary War, 1801-1805, also known as the Tripolitanian War and the Barbary Coast War was the first of the two Barbary Wars. The United States and Sweden fought alongside the four North African states. 
These four North African countries are collectively known as the Barbary War. State Three of them are autonomous but nominally Ottoman provinces, Tripoli, Algiers, and Tunis. The fourth is the independent Sultanate of Morocco. The reason why the United States got involved was the pirates from the Barbary states. They hijacked American merchant ships and seized their crews for ransom, and demanded that the United States pay tribute to the rulers of Barbary. U.S. President Thomas Jefferson refused to pay his respects. Since 1800, Sweden has been at war with Tripoli. Barbary pirates and quasi-independent Ottoman Empire personnel in Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli and the independent Sultanate of Morocco under the Aravit, Barbary Coast, dynasty are the scourge of the Mediterranean. The capture of merchant ships and the enslavement or extortion of their crews provided wealth and naval power to the Muslim rulers of these countries. The Order of the Roman Catholic Trinity or Order Matherans has a history of hundreds of years in France. Its unique mission is to collect and pay funds for the relief and rescue of captives of Mediterranean pirates. According to Robert Davis, between the 16th and 19th centuries, between 1 and 1.25 million Europeans were captured by Barbary pirates and sold as slaves. Nine Barbary pirates attacked American merchant ships, used ransom to save the lives of captured sailors, and finally paid homage to the United States to prevent further attacks just as they did to European states. Before the Treaty of Paris officially announced the independence of the United States from Great Britain, according to the Treaty of Alliance, 1778-83, during the Revolutionary Era, France protected American shipping. Although the treaty does not mention the Barbary countries in its name, it does refer to the common enemy between the United States and France. Therefore, Piracy against American shipping only began after the American Revolution, when the United States government lost its protection under the Treaty of Alliance. The failure of this protection by the European powers led to the seizure of the first American merchant ship after the Treaty of Paris. On October 11, 1784, Moroccan pirates occupied Betsy in the British Isles. The Spanish government negotiated the freedom of the captured ships and crew. However, Spain suggested that the United States pay tribute to prevent further attacks on merchant ships. The U.S. Secretary of State in France, Thomas Jefferson, decided to send envoys to Morocco and Algeria to try to buy the treaty and the freedom of the sailors captured by Algeria. Morocco was the first Barbary coastal country to sign a treaty with the United States on June 23, 1786. The treaty officially ended all Moroccan piracy activities against U.S. maritime interests. Specifically, Article 6 of the treaty stipulates that if Moroccans or any Americans captured by the coastal state of Barbary dock in a Moroccan city, they will be released and protected by the Moroccan state. Diplomatic actions by the United States and Algeria, another central Barbary coastal state, were much lower than those of Morocco. Algeria carried out a pirate attack on pirates on July 25, 1785, and captured the schooners, Maria and Dauphin, a week later. The four states along the Barbary coast require $660,000 per person. However, only a budget of $40,000 was allocated to the special envoy to achieve peace. Efforts have been made to achieve a reasonable diplomatic dialogue to negotiate or rescue the captured sailors. Maria and Dauphin's crew continued to be enslaved for more than a decade, and soon the Barbary state charged the forces of other ships. In March 1786, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams went to London to meet with Tripoli's envoy Sidi Haji Abdul Haman, or Sidi Haji Abdul Haman, Dul Rahman Ajad, to negotiate. When asked about the basis for the claim that war should be launched against a country that has not caused harm, the ambassador replied. Jefferson reported to the Foreign Secretary, John Jay, and John Jay presented the ambassador's comments and proposals to the embassy. Jefferson believed the tribute would encourage more attacks. Although John Adams agreed with Jefferson, he felt that circumstances compelled the United States to pay tribute until a sufficient navy could be built. The United States has just fought an arduous war, which has plunged the United States into significant debt. 
24 Although the incarceration on the Barbary Coast was different from the incarceration of the American and European powers at the time, the various letters and testimonies of the captive sailors described their incarceration as a form of slavery. Prisoners on the Barbary Coast was able to obtain wealth and possessions, as well as gain status beyond slavery. An example of this is James Leander Cathcart, who was promoted to the highest position a Christian slave could achieve in Algeria and became an advisor today, governor. Even so, most of the captives were forced to provide labor for the Barbary pirates and fought under extremely harsh conditions, causing plagues and diseases. When news of the deal reached the United States through narratives and letters of released prisoners, the Americans lobbied the government to take direct action to stop piracy against American ships. On July 19, 1794, Congress allocated $800,000 to release American prisoners and the peace treaties with Algiers, Tunisia, and Tripoli. On September 5, 1795, U.S. negotiator Joseph Donaldson and Algiers Day signed a peace treaty which included the advance payment of $642,500 in kind, silver coins, for peace, the release of American prisoners, expenses, and various plant a gift for day. Royal Court and Family An additional indefinite annual donation of shipbuilding supplies and ammunition will be awarded to day company of $21,600. The treaty was designed to prevent further piracy, resulting in Day's release of 115 captive American sailors. With the support of George Washington and others, Jefferson continued to advocate for stopping the tribute. With the resumption of the U.S. Navy in 1794 and the subsequent increase in the firepower of the sea, despite long-term habits that have been difficult to change thus far, the possibility that the U.S. could not change. Refusing to pay tribute has become more and more probable. The continuing demand for awards eventually led to the establishment of the United States Department of the Navy, which was established in 1798 to prevent further attacks on American shipping and to end the Barbary state's demand for huge tributes. Federalists and anti-federalists argue about the needs of the state and the tax burden. Jefferson's own Democratic and anti-naval Republicans believed that the country's future lay in its westward expansion. The Atlantic trade threatened to take capital and energy from the new government and use it in the old world wars. In the divided election of 1800, Thomas Jefferson defeated President John Adams. Jefferson was sworn in on March 4, 1801. The third president believes that resolving the crisis in Tripoli will require military power, not endless tributes. Just before Jefferson's inauguration, 1801, Congress passed naval legislation that, among other things, provided for six frigates, they should be manned and equipped by the instructions of the President of the United States. If Barbary power declares war on the United States, these ships will sink, burn, or destroy their ships and ships to protect our business and destroy their incapacity. At the inauguration of Jefferson's inauguration in 1801, Tripoli Pasha, or Basha, Yusef Karaman Lee asked the new government for the U.S. $225,000, equivalent to the U.S. $3.46 million in 2019. In 1,800, total federal government revenue was just over $10 million. Putting his long-standing belief into practice, Jefferson rejected this request. Therefore, Pasha declared war on the United States on May 10, 1801 not through any formal written document, but in the usual Barbary way of cutting the flagpole in front of the American consulate. Algiers and Tunisia did not follow their allies in Tripoli. Before Jefferson learned that Tripoli had declared war on the United States, he sent a small squad consisting of three frigates and a schooner, and General Richard Dyer sent gifts and letters to try to keep the peace with the Berber power. However, if war was declared, Dell was instructed to protect American ships and citizens from possible aggression. Still, Jefferson insisted that it has not been authorized by the Constitution, without congressional approval, beyond the scope of the Constitution. Defense He told Congress I have transmitted to you all the important information on this matter. In the exercise of this important function of the legislature conferred upon it by the Constitution, 
your judgment may be based on understanding and considering various situations. Trained Although Congress never voted on a formal declaration of war, it authorized the President to instruct the commander of the U.S. armed ships to seize all ships and cargo in Tripoli Pasha and urged that all other such acts be carried out. Take preventive or hostile actions that the state of war can prove. The squad is the American and Swedish fleet blockaded Tripoli under the leadership of Rudolf Sederstrom. The Swedes have been with Tripoli since 1800. People are fighting. On May 31, 1801, Brigadier General Edward Preble went to Messina, Sicily, to the court of King Ferdinand IV of the Kingdom of Naples. The kingdom fought Napoleon, but Ferdinand provided the Americans with the workforce, artisans, supplies, gunboats, mortar ships and the ports of Messina, Syracuse, and Palermo, which were used as naval bases. Conduct military operations against Tripoli. This fortress city is protected by 150 heavy artillery and is equipped with 25,000 soldiers, and has 10-10 rifles, two eight-gun caravans, two large galleys and a fleet of 19 gunboats. After a unilateral battle on August 1, 1801, the schooner Enterprise, commanded by Lt. Andrew Street, defeated Tripoli's 14-gun private Tripoli. In 1802, in response to Jefferson's request to authorize the handling of piracy, Congress passed the American Protection of Commerce and Sailors Act to prevent Tripoli Cruisers Act, allowing the President to employ such armed ships of the United States of America as deemed necessary. Countries that effectively protect trade and seafarers in the Atlantic, Mediterranean and adjacent waters from them. This law authorizes American ships to seize ships belonging to Tripoli and distribute the captured property to bring the vessel to port people. The U.S. Navy has not been challenged at sea, but even so, the problem remains unresolved. Jefferson raised this question the following year, increasing military power and deploying many of the best naval ships in the region throughout 1802. USS Argus, USS Chesapeake, USS Constellation, USS Constitution, USS Enterprise, USS Intrepid, USS Philadelphia, USS Vixen, USS Chairman, USS Congress, USS Essex, USS John Adams, Nautilus, USS Scourge, Siren, and Serene, Bumblebee joined in 1805, during the war, under the command of General Preble, everyone saw military service. Throughout 1803, Preble established and maintained a blockade of the port of Barbary and launched raids and attacks on the city fleet. When the frigate was patrolling the port of Tripoli, after the frigate ran aground on the reef, in October 1803, the Tripoli fleet captured the Philadelphia intact. The American efforts to float the ship in the fire on the shore battery and Tripoli naval forces failed. The boat, its captain William Bainbridge, William Bainbridge, and all personnel and crew were taken ashore and held hostage. Philadelphia opposed the Americans and anchored in the harbor like a series of weapons. On the night of February 16, 1804, Captain Stephen Decatur led a small group of U.S. Marines aboard the captured Tripoli Ketchup. He changed its name to the USS Intrepid, thereby inducing the Philadelphia Guard to float close enough to board it. Decatur's men rushed into the ship and defeated the Tripoli sailors. Supported by the fire from American warships, the Marine Corps set fire to Philadelphia, denying the enemy's use. Preble attacked Tripoli in a series of uncertain battles on July 14, 1804, including a failed attack. He attempted to use the Intrepid led by Captain Richard Summers as a firefighting ship loaded with explosives. The boat, transported from Naples to the port and destroyed Naples. Herself and her enemies. Fleet. However, the Intrepid was damaged by enemy fire before reaching its goal, killing Summers and its personnel. The turning point of the war was the Battle of Derna, April to May 1805. Former Consul William Eaton, William Eaton, is a former Army captain who used the title General, First Lieutenant of the U.S. Marine Corps Lieutenant Presley Obanon led eight U.S. Marines the team and 500 Cretan, Arab and Berber mercenaries occupied the city of Tripoli, Derna during a march across the desert from Alexandria, Egypt. 
This is the first time the American flag has been flown on foreign soil. The action was commemorated in the Marine Corps anthem, The Coast of Tripoli. The city's occupation gave U.S. negotiators the ability to guarantee the return of the hostages and an end to the war. Tired of blockades and raids, Yusuf Karaman Lee is now threatened by the continued advancement of the Tripoli region, as well as restoring his deposed brother Hamid Karaman Lee as the ruler. The threat of the plan was signed on June 10, 1805, to terminate the hostilities. The Jefferson administration agreed to pay a $60,000 ransom for the American prisoners and therefore made a distinction between paying the tribute and paying the ransom. Some people believed that saving sailors from slavery was a fair trade to end the war. However, William Eden was still miserable for the rest of the treaty's life, believing that his efforts had been in vain by the United States Special Envoy Tobias Lear, a diplomat from the United States Department of State. Eden and others believe that Dinah's capture should be used as a bargaining chip to free all American prisoners without paying the ransom. Furthermore, Eden believes America's reputation was damaged when Hammond Karaman Lee was abandoned after agreeing to reinstate him as leader of Tripoli. Eden's complaints were generally unheard of, especially when attention turned to strained international relations, which eventually led to the withdrawal of the United States Navy from the area in 1807 and the outbreak of the War of 1812. The First Barbary War benefited the reputation of the U.S. military command and war mechanism. Until then, the U.S. military command and war mechanism had not been tested. The First Barbary War proved that the United States could wage war far from home. The American military is cohesive and can fight together as Americans rather than fighting alone as Georgians and New Yorkers. American government and American history, Decatur returned to the United States and became the first post-revolutionary war hero. However, the more immediate problem of Barbary piracy has not been fully resolved. By 1807, Algiers had returned to the position of taking American ships and sailors hostage. Distracted by the prelude to the War of 1812, the United States did not respond to this provocation until the Second Barbary War in 1815. The Second Barbary War brought General William Bainbridge and General Stephen Decatur. A naval victory was achieved, resulting in the treaty ending all American tribute payments. Second Barbary War The Second Barbary War, 1815, or the war between the United States and Algeria. It was a war between the United States and Tripoli on the Barbary coast of North Africa, Tunisia, and Algiers. On December 5, 1815, the U.S. Senate approved the Algerian Treaty of Brigadier General Stephen Decatur, and the war ended. However, De Omar Aga of Algeria vetoed the American treaty, refused to accept the Vienna Congress and threatened the lives of all Christian residents in Algiers. William Shaler, the American commissioner of Algiers, had negotiated with Decatur but fled the British ship during the bombing of Algiers, 1816. He negotiated a new treaty in 1816, and due to negligence, the Senate did not ratify the treaty until February 11, 1822. After the war, the United States and European countries stopped paying tribute to pirate countries. This marked the beginning of piracy in the region, rampant during the Ottoman Empire in the 16th and 18th centuries. Western countries have built increasingly complex and expensive ships, and these pirates are unmatched in several TA technology. The First Barbary War 1801-05, led to an uneasy truce between the United States and the Barbary States, but the Americans turned their attention to Great Britain in 1812. At the urging of Great Britain, the Barbary pirates resumed their offensive style and blackmailed their crews to the U.S. government on U.S. merchant ships in the Mediterranean. At the same time, the major European powers were still involved in the Napoleonic Wars, which did not end ultimately until 1815. However, after the end of the War of 1812, the United States returned to the subject of Barbary piracy. On March 3, 1815, Congress authorized the deployment of naval forces in Algiers, and on May 20, the squad sailed under the command of Brigadier General Stephen Decatur. Guerrier, flagship, 
Constellation, Macedonia, Elsevier, Ontario, Firefly, Spark, Flambeau, Torch, and Spitfire. On the way from Gibraltar to Algiers, the Decatur team encountered the Algerian flagship Meshuda and captured it during the battle at the Cape of Gata, and captured the Algerian brig Stadius during the war at the Cape of Palos. In the last week of June, the team arrived in Algiers and began negotiations with Day. The United States continued to demand compensation, accompanied by threats of destruction, and Day succumbed. On July 3, 1815, he signed a treaty on the Guerrier ship in the Gulf of Algiers, and Decatur agreed to return the captured Meshish and Studios. The Algerians returned all estimated 10 American prisoners in exchange for about 500 Day subjects. Algeria also paid $10,000 for the seized goods. The treaty guarantees that the United States will no longer pay tribute and grants it full transportation rights in the Mediterranean. At the beginning of 1816, Britain sent a diplomatic mission, backed by a small squadron, to Tunisia, Tripoli and Algiers, persuading days to stop the piracy and release the enslaved Christians in Europe. Bay of Tunisia and Tripoli agreed that there was no resistance but Day of Algiers did not cooperate much, and the negotiations were stormy. The head of the diplomatic mission, Edward Pellew, believes that he has negotiated a treaty to stop the slavery of Christians and return to Britain. However, shortly after the treaty's signing, Algerian troops massacred 200 Corsican, Sicilian and Sardinian fishermen protected by the British due to negotiations. This caused anger in Britain and Europe and the Pellet negotiations have deemed a failure. Twelve as a result, Pellef was ordered to go to sea again to complete the work and punish the Algerians. He formed a fleet of five warships, reinforced by several frigates, and later supported by six Dutch fleets. After a failed round of negotiations, on August 27, 1816, the fleet bombed Algiers for nine hours. The attack rendered many of Day's pirates and ground artillery shells immobile, forcing him to accept the peace offer on terms that he had rejected the day before. Pellet warned that if these terms are not accepted, the action will continue. Day agrees to these terms, but Pellew has been bragging because his fleet has run out of ammunition. 13A Treaty was signed on September 24, 1816. The British consul and 1,083 other Christian slaves were released, and the American ransom was refunded. Fourteen after the First Barbary War, European countries fought against each other, and the United States fought against Britain. However, in the years following the Second Barbary War, there was no full-scale European war, which allowed Europeans to increase their resources without being distracted and challenge the Barbary forces in the Mediterranean. Algiers and Tunisia were occupied and colonized by France in 1830 and 1881, respectively. With the decline in the first year of the 19th century, the United States and other European countries fought. They won the First Barbary War and the Second Barbary War against pirates. The Barbary War was a direct response to the raids by the Barbary pirates and the white slave trade in the British, French and Dutch states which ended in the 1830s after the region was finally conquered. After the Anglo-Dutch raid on Algiers in 1819 rendered most of the pirate fleet immobile, Algiers Day was forced to agree to terms that included the enslavement of Christians. However, it could continue to engage in the non-European slave trade. After being defeated in this period of formal hostilities with major powers in Europe and America, the Barbary country fell into decline. However, the Barbary states did not cease operations, and the British invaded Algiers again in 1828. Finally, France invaded Algeria in 1824. Finally, France invaded Algeria in 1830 and placed it under colonial rule. France also plagued Tunisia in 1881. In the Turkish Halo War in 1911, Tripoli once again brought the Ottoman Empire to Italy.